how to buy a house in Kansas City in the middle of a recession. In this video, I'm gonna give you all of the tactical tips you need to not only get the house that you love, but to get a good deal on it and avoid the host of problems that many home buyers will, will encounter, which will cause them to fall out of contracts, lose a bunch of money, or potentially make a bad investment. Now, whether we are or are not headed for a recession, I think this information is valuable and will help you. I'll link my video from last week where we discuss what exactly would happen if there was a recession, how it would impact you in the Kansas City real estate market. But in this video, we're gonna go through the three different phases of buying a home, and I'll give you several tactics tips for each phase. Phase number one is all about the mindset. And I think this is the most important one that a lot of people overlook because if you've got a strong mindset going into this journey and you're making confident decisions and you're listening to your gut, that risk of buyer's remorse, all of those naysayers who are going to say that you're making the worst decision possible, they're gonna be asking you how you did it when you come out victorious. So tactical tip number one is that you as a buyer have all of the leverage if you're buying a home in the middle of a recession. Think about it this way. If you're selling during recession, keep in mind a lot of people are gonna hold their home and wait until the recession's af over and then they're gonna sell afterwards. But if you're selling during a recession, it's because of money, you can't afford it, time, you can't afford to maintain the house or you need to move somewhere that's closer to your job or three, location, and you need to move across the country and relocate. In those situations, your back is up against the wall, you're on a timeline and you have to make a decision. You have to negotiate, you have to compromise with whoever's interested in buying your home. On the flip side, when you're buying a home, it's an implicit choice. You can always choose to rent, even if it's not ideal, but having the leverage means that you can go into this world with confidence, knowing that you, you can negotiate, which is something that you couldn't have done over the past couple years. Tactical tip number two is that waiting is a losing game. And here's why, over the past couple years, everybody who saw these homes going for $50,000 over asking price waited on the sidelines and waited and waited and just wouldn't pay $50,000 over asking. Well, they're in a worse position now because their monthly payment is exponentially higher than it would have been just you know a few months ago. Home prices in Kansas City are going to keep increasing. You know, maybe I'm wrong, maybe there's a very small dip, but there's so much demand and so little supply. I don't see supply increasing during a recession. I, I think that that would be pretty difficult. Demand might decrease a little bit, but we know that people are still going to have the buying power to purchase a home. We know that people are not all going to lose their jobs, so they're gonna seize that opportunity. And maybe demand takes a small hit, but think about it this way. We've also got generational trends. 30% of home buyers right now are from young millennials and Gen Z, and that's only going to increase because they're a larger segment of the population. So even if there's a small dip, and I'm just totally wrong about all of this, in the long run, home prices are going to keep going up. So if you wait until it's over, you've missed another golden opportunity, and now you're paying the cost of it later on. By the way, my name is Nick Massa, and if you're enjoying the video so far, hit that like button, subscribe so you see future videos like this and property tours and community and suburb spotlights. And if you like what I had to say and you think that we'd make a good fit, I'd love to work with you. So my contact info is all in the description. Send me a text, email, or we'll hop on a Zoom call and talk about exactly what that looks like for you and how we can help you implement all of this stuff and way more to get you the house that you love. Number three is don't try to time the market. Buy when it's the best time for you financially and lifestyle wise. All that matters is are you ready to buy a home and are, are you financially able to do it? And even the best Wall Street traders, for example, they're not beating the market. Nobody can consistently beat the market and estimate and predict what's going to happen with such a high degree of certainty that they are right over a long period of time. So buy when it's the best time for you, not when everybody else or the real estate market or the economy says that it is. The fourth one is you should buy and hold for four to five years. The big cost when buying a home, the reason why people don't buy and sell homes every year or two years, and there are people that do it, but the reason most people don't is because of the transactional cost. When you buy a home, you're paying two to 5% just to close the loan. And then when you sell the home, you're paying selling, you're paying closing costs again with the title company. You're also paying the real estate agents and that stuff adds up. But the one thing that offsets it is the appreciation of your home and the equity that you make each time you make a monthly payment. But here's the problem, is that in the first year or two, that home's not gonna appreciate by much. 
And in that first year or two, you're mostly paying interest and paying very, very little equity on those monthly payments. It's that third and fourth and fifth year that your equity really starts to climb up. So if you sell in one to two years, you're gonna pay those transactional costs. But if you hold for four to five years and there is a slight dip in home prices, it doesn't matter because you've built up your equity and that home is appreciated and you've weathered the storm. Phase number two is all about the buying process and searching for homes to buy. So tip number one is all about your lender. And I know that realtors shout this from the roof deck get for, get pre-approved and work with multiple lenders and pick one at the end do that but also make sure that those lenders are not going to go out of business okay because it, it can happen i know it sounds ridiculous but it could happen and if you're in the final leg of that process you've got a home that you love you know the inspection looked good it appraised and your lender all of a sudden goes out of business that, that's a huge, huge issue. You've gotten your hopes up, and now we're in a situation where we've gotta, we've gotta reinvent the wheel here and start from step one. So yes, get multiple lenders. Yes, also make sure they're not going out of business, but also during this process, we wanna find a local trusted lender who's been in business for decades, who survived a financial cycle like this before. Uh, we can't just go with a big box bank, okay? Because the reason why is because sellers and the listing agent, they're gonna look at your, your offer letter they're gonna see who your bank is. And if you're some big box bank, they know that you're sitting a long line of customers and that bank really doesn't care whether or not you close, but that local bank cares about their reputation in that community, knows the market, and they're gonna feel a lot more comfortable accepting your offer, even if it's lower than what they wanted, as long as it's from a local trusted lender. Number two, this is also about lenders, is we want to get a fully underwritten pre-approval. Okay, most of the time, you're going to go to a lender, you're gonna give them all your documents, they're gonna they're gonna provisionally look over them and tell you exactly what they think that they could they could loan you okay so they're gonna give you the, your estimated budget and then when you get a offer accepted that that lender is gonna go through and underwrite the loan this is the final leg the last bit of paperwork they need to actually fund it and help you close on the house instead we're gonna take that last leg of the process and put it at the beginning meaning when you're armed with a fully underwritten pre-approval the risk of falling out of contract it goes away. The strength of your offer increases. The bank's already done all that difficult paperwork, so now you can close quicker. And if a seller needs to exit and get rid of that house quickly, then you can offer them a solution. And that solution obviously is, is gonna come with a price. And that price means you're getting a deal on that home. Number three is we've got to expand the area we're searching. And I know you may or may not have a couple of places that you're that you're really looking at, some suburbs or places, neighborhoods in Kansas City that you're looking at, but we've got to expand beyond those and maybe instead of buying in that you know the hottest market there is maybe buy next to it buy the buy what gets you value okay is the community safe are the schools good is the house a good size are you overpaying for that size of a home would it really impact you if you went a little bit further away from the city and into one of these up-and-coming suburbs and i've got some of them on this channel i spotlighted i made videos about some of these suburbs if you are looking in an area of kansas city or not quite sure where to look I, i'm always available to help you figure that out just send me an email text or let's hop on a zoom call and we can figure out the best place for you but we've got to expand our search and keep our options open. Number four is we've got to scope out those motivated sellers. Now, if anybody's selling their home in the middle of a recession, there's some motive behind that. There's some urgency, but we want to take this up a notch a little bit, okay? We want to look at days on market. We want to look at homes that have cut the price, not once, not twice, but several times. We want to look at homes that have fallen back on the market. Homes that have fallen back on the market, that's kiss of death. A lot of buyers won't even touch that with a 10-foot pole, but if you're willing to and you're scoping out all these homes and you see the ones that have cut their price because nobody's nobody's biting, okay? You could be undercovering, turning up a stone that has a huge deal underneath it. So don't disregard these because a lot of other people, a lot of the home buyers that you're competing against will, this will give you a competitive advantage. And you know, don't kick a dead horse, right? But figure out a way to solve their problem. And that'll come down to your real estate agent communicating with the seller's real estate agent and figuring out what problems the seller has that you can solve by making your offer a little bit more creative. Now, the last one is similar to the lender issue. If you're buying new construction, make sure the builder is not going to go out of business. I'm not gonna reinvent the wheel and explain everything about the lender, but the same stuff applies. Just make sure and, and, and ask what happens if, you know, if they are not able to complete the, 
build or what happens. You know what? I'll link my previous video about new construction, how to buy a new construction home in Kansas City in 2023, because a lot of the same stuff applies. So if new construction, take a look at that video and we're going to move on. Phase number three is all about sealing the deal. So three tips under this one. The first one, figure out how hard you're willing to negotiate. And there's one simple question that I have. I ask all of my clients, which is, are you willing to lose this house? If you try to negotiate as hard as possible and you're swinging for the fences, you better be willing to lose that house. You better be willing to go back out there and find some other options or in the worst case situation, find a place to rent while you keep looking for homes to buy. If you are not willing to lose the house, then we've got to work with the seller. This means that we're calling the seller, the seller's agent, and figuring out you know, what matters to the seller. Obviously price matters, but what else matters? Do you care about the inspection? Do you care about the appraisal? You know, do, do you need us to close on a quicker time frame? Do you need us to make the time frame a little bit longer so you can stay in that house and figure out where you're going to move afterwards? Do you need to rent the house back? There are so many different options, and we want to make sure that we uncover every last stone so if there's a problem that the seller has that we can solve by just writing our offer a little bit differently, then that means you're going to get a good deal. Okay, not just you get a good deal, but everybody does. It's a win-win solution, and that is the best transaction to possibly have because all parties walk away happy, and it's a smooth process throughout. Tip number two is we've got to negotiate not just the price, but everything after you go under contract, okay? This is something that is completely new to the Kansas City real estate market, especially because the last two years, nobody for the most part did an inspection or an appraisal, and if they did, they covered the cost of all of those. That's changing. In this housing market, you you are able to, to do your inspection, you're able to do your appraisal. What we're going to do is if you go under contract and something comes up, we're going to make a list of the big ticket items, okay? We don't want to be nitpicky on this. We don't want to just, you know, have them repaint all the walls. You can do that at a really cheap cost and you'll probably hire somebody who's going to do a better job than the seller, but we're going to take the big ticket items. We're going to get quotes for all of those and we're going to present the quotes and a counter offer to the seller and ask for a credit in return. These are not things that we could anticipate coming up and when we made the the offer, but now we know that there are expenses we're going to have to shoulder and we want some help and some compensation with that. Now, the second thing that we need to do is with the appraisal. This is so important, especially in the middle of a recession. We never want to buy a home and pay more for it than its market value. What we want to do is we're going to get the home appraised. And if that home is, is not valued above what we're paying for it, we've got to back out. And if we're not backing out, we've got to go to the seller and we have to get some type of credit from the seller to compensate us. I Ideally, what we're looking for is to pay for a home. Let's say the home is, you know, the market value is $500,000 and we put in an offer and get it accepted at 490. Great, we've got $10,000 of built-in equity, built-in cushion for you. In case the market declines, you still have that equity. You've got a $10,000 cushion. Ideally, we can get it even bigger. And this is the same strategy that real estate investors use. This is the same strategy that I've used here in Roland Park and building a home with my dad. You buy a home below market value so that even if if all things that are terrible come to fruition, that you are protected. You've got that layer of equity and that's exactly what we'll do using your appraisal. Now, the last tactical tip I have for you, this is more of a discussion. You've probably heard date the rate, but marry the house. And basically the idea is even though interest rates are really, really high right now, a lot of real estate agents will tell you that, oh, okay, you might be paying a little bit higher of a rate now, but when rates eventually drop back down, you can just refinance your home, take out a different mortgage with a lower rate and keep your monthly payment a little bit lower. Well, is that a good strategy? Here's Here are my thoughts on this, okay? Number one is the closing costs are often what we're not thinking about. You're going to be paying two to five percent of the total loan amount in the form of a closing cost, okay? That's a good amount of money. And you'd have to be in that house for a very long time frame to have that couple hundred dollars difference in the monthly payments after you've refinanced actually pay off and help you break even from the closing costs on refinancing the loan. And if you're still with me, I know that was a lot. If, if you're still with me here, okay? Okay. By that time, you might be in the in, in, in a mindset of, okay, I've lived in this house for about four years. You know, interest rates are declining. Do I really want to refinance, or do I want to move into a better house? Has has my lifestyle changed? Have my preferences changed it changed at all? Am I looking for a new house, or am I looking for a, a smaller house now that the kids have moved on? 
you, you refinancing there are always costs to it it's not this magic wand that you just get to wave it, it, it can be difficult and you're going to pay the cost it is an option it can work out if you're going to stay there for long enough that the that difference in your monthly payment and the lower interest rate pays off and you you not only break even but make money from refinancing but if you're not going to stay in that home for a very long period of time then those transactional costs are going to eat you alive first of all thanks for watching the video and second if you're still watching at this point and you like what i had to say or you think that you and i would make a good fit i would absolutely love the opportunity to work with you all of my contact information's in the description all of these strategies that we talked about in this video i'm going to work with you to implement these and so much more so just send me a text an email or we'll hop on a zoom call you can schedule it it's synced into my calendar and we will figure out the absolute best strategy for you so that you get the house that you love you get a good deal on it and you're not regretting it or experiencing buyer's remorse later on. I'll see you on the next video.